Hello and welcome to Mr. Conley's Math. We got lesson 7.1.1 today. We're ch starting chapter 7. We're moving along. We got questions 7, 9 through 7, 13. Don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and like this video and subscribe to get information about future videos. Homework paper set up. Title your paper homework. Write the number of the problems in the focus notes margin. Show your work. Box your answer or write in a complete sentence. Use the back of the paper if you need more room. Guidelines for using this video effectively are Watch and listen to the video. Sound should be on. Do not just skip ahead. Do not just mindlessly copy the work. Pause the video when you need time to write or think. Put a question mark next to the problem you don't understand. Rewatch and listen to the video as needed. And ask questions in class or in the comments below. Let's get started. All right, question 7-9. Adam earns $36 for every four hours of work. If he continues to be paid at the same rate, how long will it take him to earn $144? Show and explain. OK, so let's go back to the beginning. We've got $36 for every four hours. Let's highlight that. That's very important. So $36 for four hours. We think of money over time. That's typically uh, how we make rates. Usually time goes on the bottom. Money goes on the top. Not always, but usually. OK, so money, we've got $36. And time, we've got four hours. OK, so $36 for four hours. And we want to know. How can we get to $144? How many hours would that take? All right, well, let's think about in class. We are trying to come up with good ways to get there. We know 36 does not go into 144 very easily. If we think of these as just two fractions, two equivalent fractions, uh, then we can find, using a big giant one, the answer. OK, so let's think. Uh, 36 doesn't go into 144 very well, but it does have 12 in it, and so does 144. So let's see if we can find the unit rate first. So 36, we want to get it down to one hour. So how do we get this down to one hour? Well, we could always divide it by 4 over 4. Use that giant one. And 36 divided by 4 is 9 dollars an hour. It gets nine dollars every hour. Okay, so if we want it to equal 144, which I didn't give enough space, how many hours would that take? Well, let's think. How many times does, what number times nine will give us 144? Again, not an easy number, but you could find that by taking 144 and dividing it by 9. Whatever that answer is, go ahead and put it right here. And multiply the top by that number and the bottom by the same number. And 4 times that number, I'm sorry, 1 times that number will be your final answer of how many hours it takes. OK, so go ahead and pause and if you need more time. OK, let's go to the next one. How long will it take him to earn $222? All right, well, we already know his money is $36 in four hours. Let's cut to the chase and use the unit rate, $9 per one hour. And we want it to equal $222. How many hours is that? OK, so that's what we're looking for. So why don't we use the same idea before, 9 times 9 times what number equals 222? Well, we can find that number by working our fact family backwards. 9 to 222 divided by 9 will equal our mystery number. OK, so go ahead and do that. 222 divided by 9, whatever that number is, multiply it by the top and bottom. And 1 times that number will be the number of hours. OK, pause if you need more time. All right, let's go to the next one. Question C, Adam earns $36 for every four hours. If he continues, uh, how could you describe his rate for a 40-hour work week? OK, so we know if he works, we said before, it's $9 per one hour. And how long would it take him to earn, or how much would he earn in 40 hours? 
okay? So that's pretty easy. If we think about it, we want to multiply this fraction by a number, by a big giant 1. 1 times what number gives you 40? That's easy. It's 40 divided by 1, right? So put a 40 in here and a 40 on the top. 9 times 40 will give how much money he makes per week. That'll be the answer you can put there. Make sure you put it in a complete sentence. Oop, we need the period there. All right, and then the next part, it says, how much does he make per day if it's a seven-hour day? Okay, well, we know it's $9 per one hour, and we know it's going to equal seven hours. So we multiply it by what? Yeah, 7. Multiply it by 7 over 7, because 1 times 7 equals 7 hours. So that means 9 times 7 will give us our answer here. That'll be how much he makes in a 7-hour workday. Okay, pause if you need more time. Okay, let's go to the next one, 710. A college has a 2 to 3 ratio of men to women in its study, uh, student body. What is the ratio of women to men? Okay, so if we know it's men to women, that means men has the 2 and women has the 3. So if you think of it, 2 uh, to 3 is the same as 2 over 3, or we could say 2, and we write the word 2, 3. Okay, Ooh, that's an ugly looking 3. Let me fix that. Okay, what is the ratio of women to men again? Okay, so if we know the ratio of women to men, that means that, oh, I wrote this wrong. Women would go first, and they'll be the numerator. So women is actually three over two, or we could say uh, three to two or three with a colon two. Oh, we say it the same way. Okay, and that would be the answer for that one. Next one says, what is the ratio of women to total students? Okay, so again, if we think of this as a ratio of men being two and women being three, then that would mean the women would be three, and the total students would be uh, all the students, men and women, so that would be two plus three. Okay, so we can write that as three-fifths, or we can say three to five, or we can say uh, three to five, but using a colon instead. Okay, part C. What percent of the college is men? Okay, so we know, again, men would be represented by the two. Men and women is the same as total students, so that's 2 plus 3. And that gives us 2 over 5. I hate when it does that. 2 over 5. And it says what percent? So we've got a fraction here, and we want to make it out of 100 because... I forgot the space for the giant 1. We want to make it out of 100 because we know percent is by definition, a number out of 100. So if we can convert this to a fraction out of 100, with a big giant 1, then 5 times what number gives you 100? That same number will multiply by 2, and that'll give us the fraction out of 100. And then that'll just be our, that number will be our percent the numerator. Okay, let's move on to D. What fraction of the college is women? Okay, so we can get this one easily. I'll just write woo at the beginning. Woo. So women would be, and it's just asking for fraction, not percent, so we don't have to do that extra step. So women would be th represented by the three and 3 plus 2, so it'd be 3 over 5, and that's all we need to do. It's women 3 over 5 as a fraction. All right, 
Pause if you need more time. Otherwise, let's move on. Okay, next. 711. Check for each of the following multiplication problems. First, estimate the product, then check your estimation by multiplying. Okay, so this is saying half of six fifths. Six fifths is almost one whole. So really, we're looking for almost, if we estimate, it looks like it's going to be about half of one whole. And we know that would be half of a half would be a half. So let's see if that's the case. Multiply uh, fractions. We just multiply numerators by the numerators, and then the denominators by the denominators. So 1 times 6 is 6. 2 times 5 is 10. They do have a common factor. We can see there's 2 and 2 and 2 and 6. So we can divide by 2 over 2, giant 1. And whatever that is will be your answer. And then you can compare it to our guess of 1 half. For B, we've got 4 fifths times 8 ninths. We want to just multiply across. We can estimate again 4 fifths of 9 over 9. Or 8 ninths is close to 9 ninths. It's almost one whole again. So really our answer would probably be 4 fifths of 1, which is still 4 fifths. So let's see if our answer is around 4 fifths. Let's multiply across. 4 times 8 is 32. 9 times 5 is 45. Uh, let's look on top and bottom. Looks like we don't have any even numbers on the bottom, so there's not an easy factor. So that'll be our answer. No re reduction needed. All right, for C, 3 sevenths times 1 half. We want 3 sevenths of a half. So we're just going to multiply again across. And we get 3 times 1 is 3, and 7 times 2 is 14. There's no common factor on the top or bottom, so that'll be our final answer for that one. All right, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, let's move on. 712, Kip and Jordan are brothers. Their dad measures them once a year by drawing a line on a door frame in their house. Kip grew 42 and 3 fourths inches to 48 and 3 fourths inches. How much did he grow last year? Okay, so here's the drawing of it. If you imagine, you know, they've got the person sitting there and they're measured uh, each year. And it looks like they grew this much in one year. How much is that? And then on the right hand side, we're going to look to see where that person ended up and how tall they are because they grew five and a half inches. But we'll get to that in a second. First things first, Kip. Okay, so Kip, how far did he grow? We've got 42 and 3 fourths. We can just subtract. If we know the distance from here to here is 42 and 3 fourths, and this distance is 48 and 3 fourths, we can just subtract 42 and 3 fourths from 48 and 3 fourths, and we'll get this area right here. That's how subtraction works in those problems. So we'll do 48 and 3 fourths minus 42 and 3 fourths. Okay, we can subtract the big numbers from the there we go. We'll start with the highest first and subtract and so on the left hand side we'll get 6 and on the right hand side we'll get 0 so the answer is going to be 6 inches he grew okay let's go to the next one Jordan was 40 and a half and he grew five and a half inches how tall is he now alright so now we just add the 40 and a half plus five and a half. So we add those together, one half plus one half is going to be one whole. Plus one whole and 40 plus five is 45. So it's gonna be 45 plus one whole, which equals 46 inches tall. Okay, so which boy grew more? We know that Kip grew six inches and Jordan grew five and a half. So we can say that Greg 
grew six inches. And Jordan grew only five and a half. Okay, pause if you need more time. Let's go to the next one. 713, last one. Draw a rectangle with an area of 22 square units. Find the perimeter of the rectangle and label the length and width of the rectangle. Okay, so let's think of all those square units. And here's the e-tool. I love these things. Desmos is great. Uh, so we've got 22 square units. How can we make this uh, turn into a rectangle? So let's think about it. Uh, there's 22 units. Obviously, we need to make it a full rectangle. It can't look like this. We have to, there, that would be a rectangle. But we haven't used all the pieces yet. So let's keep using all the pieces. Let's see if we can keep making the shape. So I doubled up. Happens all the time. Doubled them up. So I keep moving them down until I can finally get a rectangle. And you're going to find that the rectangle is going to have to be 2 by 11. So after looking at the e-tool, we took the 22 square units. And we saw that it had to have the dimensions of 2 times 11. And that was the only number that was going to give us 22 and use up all the squares the way we wanted them to. So the answer is going to be 2 times 11. OK, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, great job. You've done some good work on these problems. Keep working hard. Keep working through it. We'll get through the year. We are almost uh, three quarters of the way there. We are doing a great job. Let's keep it up. And if you need anything, let me know. I'm here to help. Congratulations on completing your homework assignment. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to Mr. Conley's Math to get updates on future videos. Thanks for watching.